All right, guys, welcome back to our channel. Uh, today, we're going to talk about titanium, welding titanium, and how I've been accused of been doing it wrong for so many years. So when we're doing race car parts, there's a lot more forgiveness there than if we're making something that's going to go to the moon or be in space and, and be under extreme loads. This here is a gas pedal that goes in our cars, and it, and it pivots, uh, so there's not much to it. But the controversial part that we get into is welding titanium in its state that we're gonna weld it in or welding titanium in an oxygen-free environment. So technically, if you're welding things that have to be real structural and, and dead on what it's supposed to be, then yes, you should be welding in an oxygen-free tank. But for what we're doing, I've been building titanium gas pedals for 25 years and I've never had one break and we've done window frames, parachute mounts, body mounts, and we've just never had failures because they just, they're not seeing the thrust or some of the loads that a, a fighter aircraft or a spacecraft would see that would be all welded in titanium. So with what we're doing on such a small scale, it will be just fine. But one of the things that you're gonna get into Welding titanium is it's extremely difficult. It's almost like welding a piece of paper with, mag with two magnets and the magnets are wanting to try and stick. So you really have to focus on getting your, your rod into the puddle and getting it in and getting it out. If you have it dance around or hang around with what you're trying to do, it'll want to stick to your part. And once you stick to your part, there's no pulling it back. So. Let me kind of go ahead and show you a little bit. I'm going to kind of TIG weld this little part right here and kind of give you an idea. Now TIG welding titanium is totally the opposite of TIG welding aluminum. You got to go a little bit slower with it and get in and get out. So your focus factor on titanium has got to be a lot more than what it is with aluminum. So let's kind of go ahead and weld up this little part right here. Uh, there's really no uh, cleaning tips or anything that you need to do. Anytime we weld this titanium stuff up for race cars, it's a little more difficult. So if you're welding something that is, uh, say this pedal here is, uh, let's say it's 49 wall, and this part here that I'm welding up is 22 wall, well, you're going to want to try and put a little more heat into your 49 wall than you are your 22 wall because you'll burn right through it. But once we get our puddle going, then we just kind of keep in that puddle and kind of keep it going. And then the most important part on titanium is when you're done welding, do not yank your torch away. Keep that argon around that at least for 10 seconds so that the oxygen doesn't get in and try and oxidize your part and make it brittle there. So. Let me show you what we're talking about here and show you what an end result would look like and then we'll go from there. So when I was done, it was glowing orange. So that's, you really want to make sure that your cup and everything, you, you've surrounded this. But this color right here, kind of normal when you're welding titanium. It's not to flip out or say, hey, I'm doing it wrong. But if you was to weld titanium in an oxygen-free tank, you would have zero color. It would be the same as the titanium rod or part that you have. It would have zero color to it. So if you see a lot of these race car guys that have color to them, that tells you that they're not doing it in an oxygen free tank. So hopefully this will tell you or show you that, you know, if you like question yourself, am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? And what we're doing, if this is what you came up with or what you had, you're perfectly fine. If you're welding for NASA, then I would say you're doing it wrong and you need to be in a, in a more specific environment for what we're doing. So, but as far as race car goes, that right there will be just fine. And 
like I said, you just got to know your heat ranges and get your puddle going because when you start welding 25 wall or 22 wall or, or the real thin materials to make these things uh, as light as you can get them, you got to be able to get your puddle in there and get it in there and, and, and get it going and keep your torch to the thicker side of the material, not all the way over on the material, but just, you know, your torch will move or your, your, uh, your head of your thing will move over just a little bit and you'll still be on the both but more of the heat's going into your thicker part. And other than that, it just takes time and practice on getting it right. So that's it for today on, on this tip. And again, we hope you guys subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for the next tip.